Close your eyes and focus on your breath. Watch the breath all the way in, all the way out. And try to stay right there. Any other thoughts come up, just let them go. You want to get the mind still so that it can watch itself. Because as the Buddha pointed out, the suffering we have in the world, even though the world may have lots of bad things going on, the suffering comes from within our own minds. So we have to watch our minds. Today's Asalaha Bucha. We're remembering the day when the Buddha gave his first sermon, eight weeks after he gained awakening. He started teaching. And his first teaching was to perform his duty as a teacher. As he said, every teacher should have the duty of getting the student to know what should and should not be done. There are activities that will lead to your harm and suffering. There are activities that will lead to your happiness. You should avoid the first and then do the second. And as the Buddha pointed out when he set out the Four Noble Truths, there are certain mind states that you should try to abandon, the craving that leads to suffering, and certain mind states that you should encourage. path to the end of suffering. So those are the, the shoulds that we have. And of course, the Buddha is not forcing them on us, but he says, if you want to put an end to suffering, this is what you have to do. This is the way the world is. So we look inside to see what we're doing, what we're thinking, that may be causing unnecessary suffering. And if you can see that you're doing, getting involved in any unskillful thoughts, well, just let them go. You have to be in charge here, because no one else can get into your mind. No one else can see what's going on in your mind. Even those who can see what's going on in your mind, they can't be telling you all the time what to think and what not to think. So you have to learn how to judge for yourself. And to judge for yourself, to judge well, you have to get the mind to be really still. So get the mind here in the present moment with the breath coming in, the breath going out. Stay in one place as much as you can. And things will become a lot clearer. You'll see things that you didn't see in your own mind before. Some good, some bad. But then you've got the instructions. The good things you encourage, the bad things you let go. So we commemorate this event because this is the beginning of our knowledge of the Dharma. The Dharma has always been true. Because the Dharma is the truth about the way things really are. But it's not the case that it's always spelled out for us like this. And John Suat made the distinction. He said, this is not the beginning of the Dharma, but it's the beginning of the Sasina Dharma, the teaching, of the, the teaching of the Dharma. And we still live in a world where the Dharma is still available. We can hear it, we can read it, we can practice it. So take advantage of that fact. We call this day Asalaha Bhujha. Asalaha is the name of the month in Pali. Bhujha means homage. We're not, we're not doing homage to the month. We're doing homage to these events. And as the Buddha said, the best way to do homage to him and to his teaching is to practice the teaching. So in never, whatever way you find that you can practice the teaching, by being generous, by being virtuous, and especially by training the mind, that's how you show your respect and gratitude for the fact that the Buddha went to all that trouble to find the Dharma and to teach it. And there was the beginning of this teaching career, lasted for another what, 45 years? That's a long time to be wandering around northern India teaching, meeting all kinds of difficult people, and doing it for their own good. Even though some people resisted, other peop some people were receptive, some people were resistant. But the Buddha kept on teaching until the Dharma was well established, well established enough so that it's still with us 2,600 years later. Now it's up to us to keep it alive through the practice, to get a clear sense of what should be done and should not be done. And don't regard it as just rules that someone else has enforced on you. These are recommendations for someone who really has your well-being in mind, has your well-being at heart. So act in a way that shows that you're concerned about your well-being as well.